Hello everyone and welcome to ID Knowledge Base. In this video lecture, let's talk about how to design and secure your Active Directory tiering and prevent all sorts of internal and external attacks. In the company, most IT departments use the same highest privilege account everywhere to manage internally and remotely corporate servers, including domain controllers, secure servers, and workstations. We have to seriously change the way of IT operations to prevent most modern attacks, for example, pass the hash, pass the ticket, and different levels of curb roasting attacks. Even a ransomware attack cannot destroy your whole network, or you may say that this is one of the concrete solution in many to prevent and spread ransomware attacks. In this video, I am going to demonstrate to you the effective and the only method that works nowadays to harden and prevent your network. None of those attacks works if you have the fundamentals correct. If you understand how operating systems and security systems work, none of those should work. The world is changing and reactive security is dead. Everyone needs to move to proactive security and make sure the operating systems are secured with the correct configurations. End of this video training, you'll know the biggest threat to your security and how to increase protection. To secure your Active Directory infrastructure, you have to seriously follow the directory triggering configuration in the Active Directory environment and should apply it right now. This is a normally seen Active Directory domain scenario in my lab, just to demonstrate and harden the corporate AD server through the group policies. In my existing lab, I have two domain controllers, or maybe more in your case, have several servers, for example, the application server, file server, web server, email server, and database servers, and some workstations. And all are the centrally domain joined. Almost all small to medium sized network design this simple on a single broadcast domain network, but corporate or enterprise network follow the best practices to secure their internal networks along with the segmentation of the network VLANs with strict network policies. It does not matter how secure you design your internal or remote networks, as long as you are using the highest privilege account to log in remotely and manage your lowest privilege registrations or servers. If you have not changed your habit of using the domain admins or the single highest privilege account to accomplish the job remotely in different servers and workstations, then you will be screwed. You should have to stop this practice right now. In my previous video, I have discussed the domain admin privileges impersonation attack where I have demonstrated to you all how typical domain users who only have a local PC admin rights can impersonate domain admin privileges because they are using the single account to manage all the domain controllers, servers and workstations. Directly trading and mitigating PTH or pass the hash. Split your environment into three layers and Azure has a minimum of two layers. Never allow higher layer admin to log to lower layers. Create a group policy to lock down admins from logging on to anything but the domain controllers only. Remember, you don't need a domain admin to log into any other case to a domain controller. They should play in within the domain controllers. Create a group policy to lock the server admins from logging on to anything but servers only. Then create a group policy to lock workstations admin from logging on to anything but workstations. This means if someone logs on to an endpoint and gets a ransomware attack, and later on, if you log on as a workstation admin, then you only lose that computer or this tier, but you don't lose the company. On the other side, if you log on to a workstation as a domain admin and it's not a privileged access workstation, you will be screwed definite. This is the biggest mistake today you can make. So you use a domain admin account, log on to a compromised endpoint, then the ransomware can encrypt your Active Directory database and your sysfault directory which directly affects the group policies and then you lose the company sporadically. But this is not possible with the privileged access workstations. This is how it looks like in my environment. I want to give you a concrete example of how it is done and that's how you build this. We will have to create at least three layers directory trading groups in our on-premises active directory environment and manage it through the group policy. And Azure has a minimum of two layers once you understand the directory trading, then you could increase your directory trading according to your needs. So the first tier is tier number one. Domain admins group should restrict to within the domain controllers only. And remember, you don't need a domain admins to log into any other secure server or workstations anymore. Either logging on locally or remotely, they should play within the domain controllers only and prevent logging into the secure server and workstations. You could create a separate group policy for domain admin groups. I will modify the existing policy rather creating a new domain controller policy. Tier number two, server admins group should be restricted to within the secure servers only. 
for example your email server file server database server web server and so on they won't be allowed to log in locally or remotely into the domain controllers and workstations but should play within the secure servers only tier number 3 last but not least the workstation admin groups should be restricted to all sorts of windows 10 and 11 workstations you could also use this account to provide remote assistance and troubleshooting purposes and they won't be allowed to log into the domain controllers and the secure servers locally or remotely they should play within the workstations only you could also add the server admins and workstation admins group into their respective local pc administrators group to get the full picture and control over the pc and i prefer to add in the local pc administrators group all right now let me take you to my active directory server and i'll show you what it looks like and how to configure and manage all these directory tiering this is my active directory server 2022 i am opening my group policy management console expanding the hierarchy and i'll show you my tier number 1 solely for domain admins only and i have modified it in the default domain controller policy click on settings in the computer configuration expand the security settings local policies rights and assignments in this default domain controller policy a group policy object i have changed some policies first i have restricted my domain admins group to domain controllers only so only a member of this domain admin can log into domain controllers and prevent the workstation and server side admin groups from logging in locally or remotely to my domain controllers next tier number 2 server admins group policy object here i have restricted this to my server admins group only and the member of this group can have the privilege to log in locally or remotely and administer the server also prevented domain admins and workstation admins to log into my secure servers even super users or domain administrator is not allowed to log in and manage these servers this sounds weird but trust this is the only mitigation to get rid of parser hash and ransomware attacks i have also configured the policy to add server admins in the servers local pc administrators group to get full control over the servers the last in my environment is tier number 3 workstation admins group policy object In this policy I have restricted to the workstations admin group only and the member of this group can have the privilege to log in locally or remotely in all sorts of windows 10 and 11 workstations and administer them also prevented domain admins and server admins group to log into my workstations you could also use this account to provide remote assistance and troubleshooting purposes I have also configured the policy to add workstation admin in the workstations local pc administrators group to get full control over the client pc. I'll show you this policy. And here it is. And by the way, don't forget to restart or run gp update slash force command after applying this group policy objects. Now test the user's login. First from my domain controller let's try to rdp into my secure server with the domain admin credentials open the rdc and type the file server name in my case my file server name is fs1 and i will provide the domain admin login details itkb/administrator and the password and it should prevent you from logging into the server as expected it's perfect now try again with the workstation admin account and this should give you the same error and yes it is now try to log in with the server admin credentials and this time you should be able to successfully log into the secure server perfect now open the cmd and check your group membership you are the member of the server admin now sign out from the server and now try to access the server with the unc path 
or over the network. Double backslash FS1. Even though you cannot access your servers from that way, so and this is the bad news for the ransomware attackers. You are now really understanding the fundamentals and hardening your Microsoft servers. Now move on to one of our secure server and try to log in physically. With the server admins account first, open the RDC, remote desktop connection, type the domain controller name, in my case it's AD2K22, click connect, and now I have to provide the server admin login details. As admin dot SRV indicating server and my password. It should prevent you from logging into the DC and as expected, it's perfect. Now try again with the workstation admin account. This should also give you the same error. And yes, it is. Once again, now try to log in with the domain admin credentials and this time you should be able to successfully log in to the domain controller. It's perfect. Now sign out from the DC and try to access the DC with the UNC path or over the network. In my file server, open the run command, type double backslash, the win controller name, and hit enter. Even though you cannot access your servers from that way, so, and this is again a bad news for the ransomware attackers, that ransomware cannot propagate from the secure server to your DC. This is you are going to harden your activity environment. Now let's try the same from the help desk or workstation admin PC. Login first. Open the remote desktop connection. Type the PC name. In my case, it's AD2K22. Enter. And now try to log in with the workstation admin login credentials. It should prevent you from logging into the DC. And as expected, it's perfect. Now try again with the secure server admin account. sadmin.srv and type the password, hit enter. And this should prevent you and yes it is. Now let's try to attempt with the domain admin credentials and this time you should be able to successfully log into the domain controller. Domain name slash administrator, type the admin password. It's perfect. Now sign out from the DC. And try to access the DC with the UNC path or access over the network. Even though you cannot access your domain controller from that way, so as you can see, we are securing our servers and workstations from any type of malicious attacks and the most notorious attack is ransomware and privilege escalation attack. Block pass the hash attack. It is a very simple and quick fix. What if you get the admin rights in the local box in a home or office situation? If it's connected to the company network, then we have to make sure that these are unique devices that if they get compromised, they don't compromise the other computer in the network. But we have to make sure that if someone gets this machine or gets admin rights on this machine, they don't get admin rights on the next machine. This is quite straightforward. This is what known as blocking pass the hash or mitigating the pass the hash attack, where you get the local computers to steal hashes from the LSS process and send it to another machine. They can be prevented first. This is uh, just like a quickly fix your environment. Someone steals the admin password from this machine. They won't work on another machine because they belongs to a new pseudo group introduced in Windows 8.1 called local account and member of administrators group. They will be blocked by this simple rule. But in reality, you should deploy labs and that's the real and final answer. But before to get here, you need a quick fix which is this one. 
Let's prevent our domain controller and other secure servers from the pass the hash attack from the group policy. I will modify my existing domain controller policy, open the group policy management console and edit your GPO. In the computer configuration, click on policies, then Windows settings, now security settings, local policies, user write assignments. Click on deny access to this computer from the network. Click on add users or groups. Browse. Click on locations and select the server name. Now click on advanced and click on find now and now search the local account and member of administrators group. Click OK multiple times. And now you are prevented from pass the hash attack. It's very quick and simple. You can also apply this policy or same method on your other secure servers as well. All right, that's all for the now. And I hope you have learned something new today from this video. Principally, if you are learning ethical hacking, information security or cyber security, all are equally emphasized for you to perform defensive and offensive hacking approaches, trainings and tactics. Those who have a sporadic nature of learning like me should watch this video repeatedly and conclude your understanding. I am sincerely showing gratitude to you for being here and I look forward to joining you through this lecture. Thank you.